Good morning, St. Matthews. How are you doing today? It's so lovely to be with you again, though not as quite as lovely as it would have been to be with you here in person. Who remembers what season it is? And I hope you said Advent and not Christmas. We'll think a little bit more about Advent and, and what this week teaches us. But before we do any of that, you know how we begin. We offer ourselves to God. We light the candle. So I'm going to light the candle behind me. Check in with your teacher. Make sure it's safe. And then you can light the candle in your classroom as well. And let's join together in our opening prayer. And let's begin the way we always do, with both our hands out. In one hand, we have all of the things that, that bring us joy. And in the other hand, we have the things that, that worry us or make us sad, but we can bring it all to God. As we say, Lord, we are here today to worship you together. So we're ready to worship. And we're thinking about preparations. Advent is about getting ready for Christmas. And over the last few weeks, we heard about different people who helped people get ready for Jesus and for Christmas. Do you remember one of them, all of them? Yes, so we learned about the prophet Isaiah. We learned about the prophet Micah. Last week, we, we learned about, do you remember? That's right. Last week, we learned about John the Baptist. And today, we're going to learn about a special someone. I'm not going to tell you her name quite yet. But one of the things that she experienced was joy. And this week, as we light our Advent candles, we're going to be thinking about joy. So the first week, what candle was that? Yeah, that was about hope. Last week was about peace. And this week is about joy. So we're going to light three candles today. And let's pray now for more joy. Now, as always, you can listen to me pray or you can put me on mute and one of you can pray in your classroom. We lit the first candle to pray for hope. We lit the second candle to pray for peace. We light the third candle to pray for joy for ourselves and for everyone. We give thanks for the beauty of joy and the way it comes to us when we don't expect it. We pray for everyone who feels no joy. May they find joy that shines like this candle flame. Lord Jesus Christ, hope of our hearts and hope for the world. Come close to us this Advent. Amen. And as we think about joy, Let's sing our first song with joy. It is a song called, What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. 
Well, now the first thing we're going to do is join in a quiz. You like quizzes, don't you? I love doing these quizzes with you. And I told you that today we're going to be learning about someone else who prepared the people who was prepared for the birth of Jesus. And I wonder if you can guess who that was from looking at the picture, maybe. But we're going to do a quiz about her. Now, that's your first clue. Um, and we'll go through a few different questions. Maybe you will rem remember some of these answers, but otherwise we will, we will discuss them later. So on to our first question. So the young girl in today's story, which you will hear in a little while, was surprised by what God chose to say to her. Do you think her name was Mary or Bob or Joseph? You've got a couple of clues there in the question. What do you think her name was? Well done. Yes, her name was Mary. So Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that's who we're going to be learning about today. Ready for our next question? Let's go. Now, I don't know how many of you know this. What age was she? Who knows how old she was? Any guesses? Yes, can you believe it? Mary was only a teenager when she had this all important news and this all important job to do. Well done if you got that right. Now let's move on to the next question. Now we've done lots of Bible stories before. Do you know where she lived? Did she live in, in Jerusalem? Now Jerusalem was the main city, that's where the temple was. Did she live in London or did she live in a tiny village? Go on, get your thinking caps on. No, she didn't live in London. She didn't live in Jerusalem, though it's a big name and an important place. Yes, she lived in a tiny village. So a couple of things that you may not know there, but we will learn more about Mary today. Let's get on to our next question. Someone quite unexpected appeared to her one day. Now, let me see if you remember. Was it the king who appeared to her? Was it an angel or was it a ghost? Oh, well done. You remember your Bible stories, don't you? It was an angel who appeared to her. Now, let's see what happened next. Someone more important and amazing than him, than even the angel, was very pleased with Mary and had sent her a message. Was it God? Was it the king? Was it another angel? Now, all three of those would be important, wouldn't they? Who was it? Yes, God sent the angel, the angel Gabriel, to give a message to Mary. Now, that all-important message, do you know what that message was? What was God's message to Mary? Was it that she was going to be a famous singer? Was it that she was going to marry the king? Or was it that she was going to have a baby? Who said have a baby? Well, you know your story. Now, if you were in church, I'd have got you to help me with this. So let's move on. I think we've got a couple more questions. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this would be no ordinary baby. He was someone very special. And I think I may have given a clue when we started. Was he going to be God's son, Jesus? Was he going to be a great leader? Was he going to be king forever? Now, this may be a little bit tricky. Which one are you going to choose? Now, who was that who said all three? Well done. Because that's right. Because this baby was going to be Jesus. This baby was going to be a great leader and king forever. And that's what we celebrate every year. And I think that brings us to the end of our quiz. And let's think a little bit more. Now, some of those things you may have known. Some more information we'll get to know as we listen to our story for today and then as we discuss it.
And we've got Anna Claire, who's going to read our story for us, but she's going to need your help. Are you going to help her with the actions? Anna Claire will tell you what to do. Morning, everybody. As it's the lead up to Christmas, we have the story of Mary and the angel. We have actions for this one, so you're going to need to follow along. When we hear the word excited, we're going to rub our hands together. When we hear the word kitchen, we're going to chop, chop. When we hear the word bread, we're going to butter our bread. When we hear the word wedding, we're going to hold hands. And when we hear the word dazzling, we're going to look shocked. Mary was very excited because soon she was going to get married. One day while she was in the kitchen, chop, making some bread and thinking about her wedding, she suddenly saw a bright light appear outside in the hallway. She ran out of the kitchen, chop chop, still carrying her bread and thinking about her wedding and almost bumped into the very tall man. He was wearing a dazzling white cloth with a very bright face. Mary wasn't sure whether to be frightened or excited at meeting this person. He certainly looked very dazzling. Don't be afraid, said the man. I've got good news for you. Mary did start feeling afraid and she went very white. He said, God wants you to help, Mary. The man went on. You're going to have a baby and God wants you to call him Jesus. He will be the son of God and he will be king who will be in charge forever. The man seemed very excited about this, but Mary wasn't so sure. What about her wedding? She wasn't even married yet. Mary was so amazed that she dropped the bread. Got butter our bread on the floor and she ran back into the kitchen. Chop, chop. But the man in dazzling white didn't seem to mind. He said goodbye and when Mary looked again, he had gone. For a long time, she sat in the kitchen chopped up with the bread in her hands thinking about the dazzling man in white and about her wedding and about God's baby and the more she thought the more she felt very excited. Did you enjoy that story? Did you enjoy joining in with the actions? Thank you, Anna Claire. And you can continue with, with those actions for, for buttering bread and for, for wedding and um, as you remember that story. But let's think about that story a little. What happened with Mary was just amazing, wasn't it? But how do you think she was feeling? We had um, some of those words in our story today. There were a couple of things in particular. How do you think Mary was feeling? Yes. That's correct. Our story tells us that she was afraid. She was so afraid that she went white. But there was another feeling that she experienced as well. Yes, she was excited. Now, if we put together what we heard in that story and what we learned in our quiz, Mary, this teenager, she was looking forward to getting married. She wasn't even married. And then an angel appears to her. And the angel gives her a message from God. Now, we learned that Mary was from a tiny village. She didn't think that, that God knew her or cared about her. Um, who knew Mary? She was quite a simple person in a little village that no one would have heard about. But God had a message for her. God had a really important job for her. And while she was afraid, the angel told her not to be afraid. 
The angel told her that God was going to help her with this plan. And as she heard about this, and as she thought about it, she started getting excited. So apart from all the other things that she felt, she felt a lot of joy. Now, of course, she was nervous because this was going to be really important. She knew that there would be some difficult times, but some good times. There would be some sad times as well as some times that would be full of joy. Just like we feel at the moment, isn't it? We're sad that we can't be together. We're sad that we can't have our Christmas performances. But we also experience joy because, because we are well. And, and this week you had Secret Santa as well, didn't you? So those are the things that bring us joy. But there is a little difference between happiness and joy. Now, if you were here in church today, I would have asked you to help me with the differences for happiness and joy. Now, there was something that I learned when, when I would have been about your age. I learned that happiness depends on happenings, things that happen to you. But joy depends on Jesus. Let's look at some examples. So if you think about Christmas, there are lots of things that make us happy, isn't it? When you think about Christmas Eve and you think about Santa coming, well, he comes on Christmas Eve and then he goes away for a whole year. And then think about the presents that you're looking forward to. The, our presents make us very happy, don't they? But sometimes after you've played with them for, for a few days or a few weeks or a few months, do you get a little bored? Do you start thinking about your next present? And then what about Christmas dinner? Don't you look forward to that with all the trimmings and all the exciting things that you have at home? But once you've eaten and you feel really full and then you don't want, want to look at it again, and then several hours later, you get hungry. Now, those things make us happy. But joy, joy is something much deeper than that. It's this feeling that lasts even when, even when things are, um, are not so good. There are things that keep us, um, keep us contented. Now, that's a big word. Year five and year six, you'd know what that means. But it's a feeling of happiness that lasts. And just like for Mary even though she knew that there was something, something quite hard that God was asking her to do as a very young girl. She felt joy because she knew that God was going to be with her. And as we think about Advent, as we think about Christmas and we think about Jesus, that Jesus who came as a baby, but Jesus who has continued as, as a king and as a leader, and that Jesus brings joy to us even today, even when we have this pandemic going on. He brings joy to people all over the world. And can I tell you a little secret? Over the last two years when it's been really hard, it's been Jesus who has continued to give me joy and continues to, to put that smile not just on my face, but that joy in my heart. And it doesn't matter. If we feel we are ordinary, because Mary was, but God, but Jesus can bring you and me joy. So, so let's pray about that now. And we've got, we've got a student from school. We've got young Alfred, who's going to bring our prayer to us now. Thank you, Lord, for Mary. Thank you, Lord, you are to give birth to your son. Jesus. Thank you that even though she was just to do a very difficult thing, she said yes. Thank you for the joy. You gave Mary Ann the joy. You gave us food. Yes, at this special time of year and great. Amen. Isn't it lovely to see a student um, do the prayer for us? And you know, you know I'd have asked you to volunteer if you were here in church. Now, let's move on to our, our next song, which is called Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, 
You are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Oh, wonderful Lord, oh, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. Do you want to join me now with the actions as we say the school prayer together? Dear Heavenly Father up above, look down on St. Matthew's school with love. Shower us with happiness, shield us from sadness, together forever. Amen. And that's what we pray every time, isn't it? We ask God to shower us with um, and I think it's just because happiness and sadness rhyme. But what we're really asking for is joy. And, and as we go through the rest of Advent, and as you go through the rest of your week, I pray that you will have hope, peace, and joy. And think about that. Mary, an ordinary girl from a little village, but God had a special plan for her. And God has a special plan for you. And you can go and bring joy to lots of other people in the next week. And we will see you next week. God bless you, St. Matthews. <laughs>